them from the saucer, not the cup. Yeah. That's the lesson we have to learn as women. Yeah. And, you know, I, I agree. I think that the biggest challenge that women have is that challenge of taking care of ourselves, mm -hmm. of loving first. ourselves first. Exactly. In fact, I rem you told a great story when I interviewed you for Happy for No Reason mm. about running out of gas on the freeway. Will you just tell that <laughs> oh story? Oh my God. I don't Remember? think I've, I've told that story since then. In my, in my SUV? Yes, yes, oh, yes. Oh, yes. So I'm, I had a brand new SUV and um, I was like two days old and I'm, I'm driving down, and I was, I was feeling kind of haughty because I had a little Fiero or a little sports car before it, and now I'm in this brand new SUV and, um, and I'm driving down the highway and it goes putta putta, putta putta and I'm thinking, what's wrong with my brand new SUV? It was 48 hours old or maybe 24 hours old and I'm putta putta, putta putta and I'm like, what's, what's, what's wrong with my SUV? Putta putta, putta putta and then it stops on the highway and I'm freaking out. I'm not. I'm, I'm thinking something's wrong with the carburetor, the voltage alternator, the something. Something's wrong. What's going on? Brand new car. And I stormed down the off ramp, huge off ramp in my. And this was a sunny day in California, so I had on my heels, I had on my little sandals, my shades, I had on my little sundress, and I'm walking off the off ramp of the 110 freeway. It's not fun. Big off ramp, and I get down to the bottom and. I go to the gas station. I was like, sir, my brand new, I kept having to say brand new because it's brand new. It doesn't make any sense that it will stop. Something's wrong with the engine. Sir, my brand new car right there stopped. And so he put some gas in the t in this little tank thing. And I said, you don't have to do that. You don't have to put gas in that. It's a brand new car. And he goes, yeah, 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 whatever. He puts some gas in it. He goes up. And the first thing he did was turn the ignition on and look at the gas gauge. And it's on empty. And he goes, ma'am, First of all, he looked at me disgusted because you know it's one thing if the car's broken, there's nothing you can do. But you know when you run out of gas, people look at you differently. Like, <laughs> okay, how irresponsible are you, lady? So he's like, ma'am, you're out of gas. And I was like, what? And so he puts gas in there, drive down, put the gas, and I cannot wait to call the car dealer. I call the car dealer. I, I just want to see how he's going to apologize to me. So I call. Him. See, this is Miss Nichols. I just bought brand new SUV, I paid for the car in cash, and I, everything's, you know, I, I was a perfect client, and I just ran out of gas on the tank, on, on the freeway, and he, he goes, yeah, what's the problem? I said, you, you gave me an empty car, you gave me an empty tank, and he said, without any hesitation, ma'am, it's my, it's not my job to fill up your tank, and in that moment, I immediately knew that this was far beyond just my SUV. Like I expected him to fill up my tank. I knew that that was a metaphor for my life. We walk through life expecting others to fill our tank up. We, and, we, and we wait for it. We wait for it through the thank yous, the adoration, the acknowledgement. While those are all wonderful, that should be the cherry on top of our cake. Our cake should be us giving ourselves what we need. When he told me that, ma'am, it is not my responsibility to fill up your tank. I went, okay, bye-bye. And I just knew that that wasn't about my SUV. I knew that was about me expecting the men in my life, me expecting my son. He didn't look at me long enough. He didn't, wait a minute, what if you gave yourself everything you needed? and everyone else was a cherry on top of your cake. Not in a self-indulgent way, not in a braggadocious way, not in a, not that way, but in a way of self-care, self-responsibility. Mm -hmm. Well, what if, what if I didn't expect the partner in my life to complete me? That whole statement, oh, you complete me. Mm -mm. What if I came to you complete? And then I just invited you in my life to compliment my completeness. What if, like what, when I got that, when I got, wait a minute, I, I, when I'm in a relationship, we're not two halves making a whole. We're two holes making a fabulous pair. When, when, we, when we start even using our language differently, like whenever I'm, I'm dating, I'm not, and I'm, I'm not married. I, I'm dating, and so if a relationship ends that I'm in, I don't say we broke up. That's a negative, even a negative neurological statement. We broke up. I'm not broken. Mm. What I say now is, mm, we're complete. Yes, we're complete. We were supposed to have that amazing experience or not and we're complete. So when we begin to see it's no one else's job but yours. This is your life. This is your journey. 
You only get today for 24 hours to sit around hoping and praying and waiting for someone else to acknowledge you. Wow, you moved to the passenger seat, to the back seat, and some of us are in the trunk mm -hmm. of our own lives. And so I'm, I'm passionate about saying, uh-uh, get back in the back seat, then hop up to the front seat, to the passenger seat, then slide over to the driver's seat and give yourself exactly what you need.